Good evening. It's Monday, July 29, 2019, here in Cebu City. I'm Sherry Ann Lib, and here's all you need to know in Newsbits tonight. An inmate was stabbed dead by another prisoner inside the Madawi City Jail male dormitory this morning. The victim was said to be a follower of drug lord Steve Gaw, who himself was killed inside the same facility in June last year. Here's Kenneth Torres for the details. An inmate of Mandawi City Jail male dormitory was stabbed dead by another prisoner while playing basketball this morning. The victim was identified as Romy Ramas who has been incarcerated for drug offenses since May 2017. Ramas was also said to be a follower of a drug lord Steve Go, who was killed in the same facility in June last year. The perpetrator, who has yet to be identified, used an improvised bladed weapon in stabbing Ramas. Ramas was brought to a hospital but he was declared dead on arrival. Assistant Jail Warden Mark Tonyaku said they are looking into personal grudge as motive in the killing. The Mandawi City Jail was placed on red alert and visiting privileges has been suspended due to the incident. Police are still conducting further investigation on the incident. Kenneth Torres, Newspits Tonight. The police regional office in Central Visayas has vowed to monitor illegal numbers games that might gain wider patronage with the suspension of Lotto, STL, Periahan ng Bayan, and Kennel. Here's Nico Tubo for the details. Police Regional Office Central Visayas Director Debold Sinas has ordered all chiefs of city and provincial police officers to monitor all kinds of illegal numbers game. Sinas said there is a possibility that illegal numbers games like Masyao, Weteng, Hantak, and Bukis would gain widespread patronage after President Rodrigo Duterte suspended all gaming activities of the Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office. Sinas also aims to implement local ordinances against illegal gambling. Last Friday, Duterte ordered the suspension of all gaming activities of PCSO, including Lotto, Small Town Lottery, Peryahan ng Bayan, and Keno, due to alleged massive corruption in the agency. All gaming activities, uh, yung gambling uh, that got the franchise from government through PCSO, are, uh, as of today, uh, suspended or terminated because of massive corruption. Data from PRO Central Visayas revealed that the police were able to close 3,482 STLs, 1,864 Periahan ng Bayan, 551 Lotto Outlets, and 30 Keno in the region. Nico Tubo, News Bits Tonight. More stories in Newsbits tonight after this short break. The Department of the Interior and Local Government has ordered all local government units to reclaim public roads used by private individuals and to clear these of illegal structures and construction. Here's Nico Tubo for the details. Department of the Interior and Local Government Secretary Eduardo Año issued a memorandum this morning ordering local chief executives to reclaim public roads used by private individuals. The memorandum also ordered the clearing of public roads of illegal structures and constructions. Anyo told local officials to exercise their powers to reclaim public roads, adding that LGUs must be able to rehabilitate this by placing street names and installing street lights. The DILG secretary also directed LGUs to revoke permits that authorize private entities to occupy public roads, alleys, and thoroughfares, and to address displacement issues that may arise from its implementation. DILG regional offices were tasked to submit a weekly progress report to the Office of the Secretary for the first three months to ensure compliance and that clearing operations are sustained. Administrative cases will be filed in case of non-compliance. 
Anyo also warned that mayors who failed to deliver will be suspended or removed from office. During his fourth State of the Nation address, President Rodrigo Duterte instructed LGUs to reclaim public roads used for private purposes in order to ease traffic congestion. Nico Tubo, News Bits Tonight. The Japan International Cooperation Agency has called for entries to its first-ever video blog contest for young Filipinos. Participants can submit their entries focused on how Japan and JICA impact their lives as a Filipino. The contest is open to Filipino citizens aged 18 to 24. Video entries must be five minutes long and must be produced as MP4 or AVI format. Deadline for submission is November 17, 2019. The winner of the contest will receive an all-expense-paid trip to Japan. For inquiries, visit the Facebook page of JICA Philippines. Here's the latest in sports with Kenneth Torres. 14-year-old Cebuana Jr. triathlete Moira Francis Herediano finished at the top in the women's 15 to 17 age group category in the 2019 Triman Triathlon held at the Fontana Hot Spring Leisure Parks Resorts in Clark, Pampanga yesterday. Herediano finished the 600-meter swim, 30-kilometer bike, and 5-kilometer run race in 1 hour, 29 minutes, and 6 seconds. Cebuana Batang Pinoy Nationals gold medalist Nicole Marie Del Rosario also came in second place with a record of 1 hour, 32 minutes, and 30 seconds. Both Herediano and Del Rosario are members of Go for Gold Talisay City Luigi Triathlon Group. Herediano finished the swim portion at 10 minutes and 47 seconds, while Del Rosario completed it at 10 minutes and 49 seconds. The two Cebuanas also grabbed the lead in the bike portion. In the run portion, Herediano crossed the finish line first after clocking 21 minutes and 31 seconds, followed by Del Rosario who capped with a record of 24 minutes and 43 seconds. Kenneth Torres, News Pits Tonight. To get the latest, visit www.sunstar.com.ph. Follow us on our YouTube channel and official social media accounts on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Cherry Ann Lim. Good evening.